Wednesday, October 31st here at the West End Gun Club. I'm here at the range today. It's a very windy morning. Um, I was trying to come out to the range last week or the week prior, but I just was really busy at work. And so I have this day off. And unfortunately, it just so happens that the uh, weather decided to be uh, not as ideal as it usually is or it was before in the previous weeks. So trying to make the best of it. It's uh, They said it was actually going to be windier today, like 20 mile an hour winds, but then I think they downgraded a little bit. And I think we're only hitting about 10 miles an hour. So it should be good. Um, it's doable and we'll make the best of it. So you're probably wondering what the hell this thing is behind me. Um, this AR-15 is actually a build I did in 224 Valkyrie. So I've got these um, Hornady 88 grain ELD match uh, in 224 Valkyrie. The reason why I built this gun is because I uh, had all the spare parts to build an upper. And so I saw a barrel on Excalibur um, barrels. They posted, I think somebody on Facebook linked to it or something or shared it. And it was, they had a sale, so it was 40% off. And I went on their site for their in-stock barrels and they had a bunch of 224 Valkyrie barrels. And I said, $180 for a 24 inch barrel, one and six and a half twist, stainless steel. I figured, why not? So I decided to pick it up. So it was 210 shipped and I had all the parts to build another upper. So I, it didn't really cost me anything short of the cost of the barrel and a new bolt because you need a 6.8 SPC bolt to uh, run Valkyrie. So I put it all together using a BCM KMR that I had, a 15 inch KMR that I had left over in my cabinet. I had a brand new Ultor MUR 1A, um, MUR 1A upper. So I put it all together uh, a week ago or two weeks prior. And today I'm putting the first rounds through it. Basically, you're just going to aim the barrel. This works for an AR upper or a bolt action receiver where you can see straight down the bore. But basically, line it up on a fixed target and then keep it, keep the, the rifle barrel stationary and then adjust your scope accordingly. So just keep looking down the bore, make sure it's on the target, then adjust your scope reticle so it's also on the target. And that's basically a generic bore sight. Given that the scope was already sighted in on another AR-15, it's actually really good. So I should be able to take a shot and I'll shoot me on paper and then I can guide it in from there. It's just a quick overview of this gun. Basically just recycling my uh, a Colt Sporter lower that I have, um, pre-2000. But we have a Voltor, an Ultor, sorry, Mer 1A. I have a BCM, Bravo Company Manufacturing, 15 inch KMR. This is the OG KMR, which has the original, like that lightweight alloy. I love this handguard because of the ergonomics. It's really, it's really thin, so it's great for my hands. Uh, this is a 24 inch Excalibur stainless steel, uh, one and six and a half twist. I put a uh, Area 419 Hellfire uh, thread adapter here. Um, muzzle the uh, muzzle brake adapter and then I put the thread protector on it just running a Harris bipod with the uh, with one of the uh, really right stuff Arca mounts but this is also Picatinny compatible so I have the Picatinny rail there um, just a standard Bravo company uh, BCM gunfighter charging handle um, a spikes tactical bolt and then I replaced it with a six and a uh, an LW sorry LW RC International uh, 6.8 SPC um, bolt. And then that's kind of it. And then a LaRue LT104 uh, 30 millimeter cantilever scope mount with a Vortex Viper PST 2.5 to 10X by 32. I don't remember. 32, 34. I have no clue. But that's what I had on my. Uh, 18 inch SPR and I repurposed it. I took it off just to use it for this testing. I actually don't have a magazine for Valkyrie or 6.8 SPC, so, and I forgot to bring my sled. So I'm just gonna use this 20 round 
bodied, straight body. Uh, basically, it uh, it's a straight body, 20 round straight body mag, but then I'm just gonna single feed over the top and just close the bolt on it. Should be okay. Um, ideally, um, I would have a sled, but it'll still lock back. You're just basically gonna drop the round over the top, just sort of guide it in so it like half feeds into the into the uh, into the uh, barrel channel or the uh, the barrel. Uh, sorry, what's the term for this? Not the barrel uh, extension. Sorry, barrel extension, and you can just drop the bolt on it, and that should be okay. First round of the bore is 26.56. It's actually kind of slow. Um, I guess they say it's 26.75, probably out of 24 inch barrel. So maybe that's about right. 26.56. Seems like it wants to hover around 2700 out of a 24 inch barrel. Um, that's what I assume Hornady and all other manufacturers are basing their velocities off of. So this is an 88 grain bullet moving at 2700 feet per second. I pushed my target out to 100, but uh, here's a quick look at the uh, shots at the 50. Basically fired first three rounds made a winch adjustment, and made an elevation adjustment. Uh, this is only at 50 yards, so you expect it to be on top of each other, but uh, we'll see how it handles at 100. Uh, it's windy again, but hopefully the target will just move back and forth and not side to side. Um, it's locked in pretty good on my base, uh, but we'll see how that goes. We'll make the hike back to the firing line. So we're pushed out to 100 yards and uh, We'll see how this goes. It looks kind of weird because I have this, uh, this is a uh, UBR stock, which isn't great for bench or shooting at all. Just, um, and it looks kind of weird because I'm using the bag. I'm not actually riding the bag so much as using the bag, um, riding the back stock on the bag so as so much as the uh, using the bag to get elevation from my, uh, from my, sh my, under my arms in which I'm cradling the stock mainly with my arms as opposed to riding the bag with the stock. So just trying to get that elevation, but at a hundred, it's a little bit more, the plat, the hundred yard uh, firing area, the ground is higher than the bench. So it should be okay as far as um, being easier to level everything out because at 50, it was kind of, kind of lower. So I had to like get enough uh, elevation on the stock, but now I can just drop it and, I'm shooting more at a level angle here, so level incline rather. <sighs> Need to drop the elevation. Do half a mil.
I can see like the target is kind of like shimmying and then my gun is shimmying because simply because of the wind. Although the accuracy doesn't seem to be affected so much as I don't think that's affecting him, but I'm seeing some up and down stringing. So that's probably just me on the bag. better I see where the gun wants to go um, as far as points of impact points of aim but I'm getting that diagonal which is usually uh, shooter error velocity seem to be going all over the place now though now it's like 26 57 um, standard deviation on this is going to be really bad. If I look at the numbers right now, it's a 13 shot aggregate so far, but you would have hoped for better velocity or consistency rather. Wind is definitely blowing me off target. I'm just trying to cradle the gun right now. Yep, I threw that one. Just going side to side. So these uh, groups aren't going to be all that great. Um, so I'm not really sure if I'm getting much valid data off of this, short of velocity information. Gun's definitely on call. Like wherever the reticle is, it's, it's hitting on that. Um, it's just right now today with these wind conditions, it's just blowing my gun like slightly. It would be a lot easier if I had big, more than 10x magnification in terms of making sure I'm timing everything cor correctly. But it seems like this gun is shooting on call. Oh, now my target's really moving out there. Here's a quick look at the data for that 20 rounds, uh, the first 20 rounds of the 224 Valkyrie through this barrel. Um, the, you look at the data, it's really bad as far as standard deviation 18.9 and extreme spread of 81. Uh, if you look going backwards, it should be around 2700, but then you see some drops, 2678, some spikes, 2737. 2692, 2700, then you get these lows like 2657, 2706 is where you expect it, 2685, 86, 76, so it's, it's kind of over the board, um, but 2700 is where I think it wants to be, but I've seen some spikes and dips, so um, this could be the factory ammo, not entirely sure, but again, uh, trying to get the first few rounds to it and then we'll uh, clean it up. I should have brought some uh, a cleaning rod, but I didn't, so it's kind of my mistake, um, kind of uh, deviating from what I usually do from break-ins, so. Um, but we'll clean it when we get home, and uh, hopefully when I get the Federal 90 grain SMKs uh, next week, then we'll come out again to the range and do some more testing. Um, here's the target at the end of the day. 
Um, this was at 50 yards. This is at 100. You see this diagonal string, and that's just me and the gun. And I shot uh, the last six or seven rounds here. So I was on call for most of the, uh, for all the shots pretty much. When the wind blew me off, I was hitting up to the right and I called my reticle here and like this is my last shot and I called that high shot. But the gun seems like it's shooting very well. If it's on call, I know for a fact where I'm hitting if I'm going right or if I'm hitting center, you know, if I'm pulling it to the right based on wind or whatever because the wind's blowing me off target. But I think this gun has potential and I would like to get it out here when it's not blowing like it is right now because if you can see, I'll let my target freely move. It's uh, just sitting here on the base right now. It's just blowing in the wind. Uh, it's getting pretty windy out there. And so I'm pretty much done, fire 20 rounds. I'm gonna clean up this gun when I get home and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, as far as when I can come out here again, um, hopefully uh, when it's uh, better wind conditions. I packed up all my gear. I'm just sitting in the Jeep because it's really windy outside. A lot of dust flowing around now. The, the wind has probably picked up to 15 miles an hour. Um, you can really hear it. And it's also creating this wind chill factor. Anyway, 20 rounds fired today in 2 2 Valkyrie. Not much shooting, but I didn't bring a cleaning rod like I sh probably should have. Even if I'm not hardcore about breaking, I should have brought a cleaning rod to at least uh, clean it a little bit. I think after 10 rounds, it might have been ideal to clean it just a little bit to get the, some, the powder fouling out. Um, but 20 rounds seems like a good stopping point, and so I'm going to take it home, uh, give it a thorough cleaning on the bore, and have it ready to go for the next time I can come out, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, I might actually come out on a weekend, even though I hate coming out on weekends because it's just hard for me to do my own thing, uh, run the cameras, all the people on the firing line. Then I got people trying to talk to me because a lot of people see what I'm doing or whatever. And I'm, I mean, I'm sociable enough, but when I come into the range, I want to do certain things as far as getting my own thing going, you know, my own things done. And so that's why I like coming out here on the weekdays. Anyway, hopefully I should have the federal 90 grain SMKs in from Target Sports USA. And then uh, I can try those out at distance. Um, assume, assuming the gun shoots well, Maybe I can take out the Palmdale, do some three, four, five, and 600 yard shooting with the Valkyrie. If it shoots well and there's no issues, like I'm not spinning, I mean, it's cold weather now, colder weather for California. So I'm not feel, I mean, it may or may not be a good testing um, point in, in time as far as the year, but if barrels, if the uh, jackets aren't spinning off, or I'm not having accuracy issues, I'm going to go ahead and risk you know, the investment on reloading dies and start spending time reloading for 224 Valkyrie. Again, this was a low cost, low risk type thing for me with uh, going with the AR platform because again, as I mentioned earlier, I had all the parts I needed to build an AR upper. So to go 224 Valkyrie in an AR, all I needed was the barrel and a bolt. Uh, 224 Valkyrie chamber barrel, six point SPC bolt. It cost me with a couple other supplies like the gas tube and then the Area 419 um, muzzle uh, adapter. $300 maybe? So $300 got me up and running on a 224 Valkyrie in the AR as opposed to me taking my nucleus action that I have still sitting at home and then buying a $325 Bartling blank, spending you know how a couple hundred dollars to have it chambered and uh, contoured and then cut and muzzle threaded for 224 Valkyrie or any like high speed 22, that could net anywhere from five to $600 of an investment. And that's a lot of more money, especially when you're locking it up into a bolt action as opposed to an AR where I can do all the work myself. So that's why I like the AR for just testing this cartridge out right now. So still, again, this is just a kind of a, up in the air type thing right now so we'll see how it goes in the next few or next several range visits anyway i'm kind of rambling on and on right now so i'm going to go ahead and hit the back ranges before i leave the range to take care of a few side project things i have to do for photography um but that's it for today today is october 31st halloween um here at the west end gun club 
And thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next vlog. Oh, helps if you have a magazine in there. And it helps if you take your empty chamber indicator out.